Hello and welcome to this screencast about how to get started with Oracle Java ME Embedded 3.3 on the Kyle board. My name is Angela Caicedo and I'm a Java evangelist at Oracle. What I want to show you in this uh, particular tutorial is to take you step by step of how you can have Java ME embedded running on your Kyle board. Everything about uh, configuration of the software, the hardware, uh, how we're going to test it, how we're going to be able to connect to the command line and login interfaces, and of course, how you're going to get started with this first Java ME embedded application. So we're going to see everything about installing, updating, or even uninstalling your application. So let's get started. So first, what we're going to do is we're going to talk about software. What do you need to install on your machine? What do you need to configure? Everything. Then we move into hardware. What do we need to do? How are we connecting the board? And then finally, making sure everything works together. So we do some testing about being able to talk to the board and making sure everything got installed properly. Then we visit tools. So in this particular tutorial, we're going to be using NetBeans. So we're going to see how in NetBeans you can create your embedded application, how you can actually run it on an emulator, and how you can actually even debug your application. So cool stuff. And then finally, uh, using the tool, we're going to be creating your first application, deploying it, and making sure everything is working properly. Okay, so let's get started with the software. What we're going to need is we're going to need MDK ARM Lite Development Kit, either version 4.54 or 4.6. Um, this is actually required because Java ME Embedded will use it to be able to actually flash the binaries into the board. So we will see how it works later. So make sure you have it. We're going to be using a terminal emulator program. Uh, for the purpose of this screencast, we're going to use PADI. And the idea of a terminal emulator is because we're actually going to connect to two different sockets on the board. Uh, we're going to be using one for the command line interface and another one um, to actually have access to the login and actually also the system output that the board is going to provide us with. Of course, we need Java ME embedded. Um, uh, we're also going to need Java ME SDK 3.3 and this is really cool because we will actually have emulators that come with this SDK and allow us to run the application on an emulator. So even before we download it and install it to the board, we can actually run it on my desktop. For the purpose of this screencast, we're going to be using NetBeans IDE 7.3 and we do need a plugin, uh, so it's going to be the Oracle Java ME SDK 3.3. Again, everything will be shown in a few minutes. For the installation of the MDK ARM Lite Development Kit, um, there's nothing really important that important that you need to be aware of just follow the instructions of the installations i do want to emphasize that at the end of the installation you will actually have the option to install the driver for the u-link so the u-link is going to be a hardware debugger it's going to be um uh, is going to be used by us so we can actually debug the application on the board. So we do need the drivers for that. So make sure you select that so you install the drivers as long as, as lo along with the installation process. Otherwise, it would just not detect the U-Link and you will have to install the drivers later on. So just make sure you do select the drivers installation. Installing PADI, um, again, it's extremely simple. Um, you actually download directly the uh, emulator executable, so there's no such a thing as an installation that just, just download and run it and execute it. And remember, we're going to be using it, um, running it twice at least, one for the command line interface and the second um, for login and output, system output. Okay, now let's install the Oracle Java ME Embedded RTX software distribution version 3.3 on your board. So the first thing that we need to do is we actually need to prepare the micro SD card. So let's see how we do that. Okay, so let's insert the micro SD card. We're gonna open it. 
Now what is going to happen is we need to format that, car, that SD card. So we're going to format, make sure you select FAT32, um, unselect the quick format and just do it. Yes. Okay. Now, go to the directory where you unzip the Java ME embedded for Kyle board. And this is the structure that you will have. You're going to have a, one directory that is called SD card, one flash, and the drivers. So if you go to the SD card, these are the files that we need to copy um, to my SD card. There are a few uh, files that you need to configure. So let me select these and copy those into the card. Okay. Now, what do we need to configure? So one thing is the platform. So let me open for editing that file. And for the platform, there are a few things that you need to know. So you need to decide if the network where you are connecting your device um, is going to have uh, either is going to be using either DHCP or if you're going to be using a static IP address. So you need to select which one. In my case, I'm just going to be using a static IP address. So let me comment out the DHCP and uncomment the static IP address. Okay, um, the address that I'm going to be using is 10.0.0.11. The net mask that I'm going to be using will be 255.255.255.0 and the gateway 10.0.0.254. Okay, another thing that is good to double check um, is the MAC address. So if you're connecting more than one board on the same um, network just make sure they don't uh, you don't have like the same MAC addresses okay you don't have any ad any conflicts another thing that you should check is, a is the watch dog uh, make sure it's false what the watch dogs is actually doing the watch dog will reset the system if anything if any programs appear to be stuck the problem is it might conflict with the debugging when you are on NetBeans, so just make sure you disable unless you really, really need it. Okay, make sure we save it and close. The second file that you actually need to modify is the RTC. In this one, you will enter your um, information about the date and time that you want the system to have okay once you have it just make sure you save us and actually remove the udp so we want it to be called rtc dot configuration file okay and just save it Okay, now um, if you go to Java, if you want to do on device debugging, there is also a file that you need to modify. So let's go to the Java directory and open these JWC properties. Here we're going to look for ODT. So there's one property that is going to be on device debugging. So if you need to do on-device debugging, make sure you turn it to true. Otherwise, just leave it to false. Okay, so now that you actually put the files on your um, SD card, we are able to eject and continue with some installation before we move to the hardware. Okay, so let's see what else we need. So let's look into the hardware list. So we need, of course, a desktop computer. We need to be uh, running Windows XP or later, and we do require two USB ports. We have the kill board, of course. We have the hardware debugger. We're gonna be using the U-Link ME. We do require 
micro SD card. Remember, we just configured, so it's actually ready to go. And finally, we need a networking LAN cable. So how does everything get together? So let's see how we should connect everything. Okay, so we finished configuring all the software in the computer. Now let's move to the hardware side. Um, so of course we're going to use um, the board. We're going to have also a U-Link ME. Um, this actually allows us to debug the code from my computer. We actually have the micro SD card, the one we just configured. We have two USB cables and we have one Ethernet cable. Um, so let's start putting things together. The first one, we need the uh, U-Link ME. This will be, allow us to do the debugging. Okay, very good. Then we need the micro SD card. Make sure it goes all the way in. Then we take the USB cable, so the first one will allow us to power the board. So we have a few USB slots here, so you can use either of them. Okay, the first one. Now the second one goes to the U-Link ME and will be also connected to your desktop. Okay, and finally we have the Ethernet cable. Very good. Okay, now the last thing we need to do is if you pay attention to a couple of jumpers that we have on the board. We have this one that is labeled BAT3V3. We need actually to move that jumper to the VAT. So let me take it, move it. So let's make sure for flashing the board, we do need to move that jumper. Okay. Okay, now we need to flash the board. So if we come here to the directory where you unzip the content of the Java ME embedded, you're gonna see it flash directory. We go in there and we have the flash file. We actually need to verify that it has the correct path. So let me open it for editing. And we can see here that is pointed to UV4, UV4 EXC. So make sure that yes, on C we have UV4 and down here we should have the UV4 executable. Okay, so we're good to go. So let me go back to my directory. Let's plug the two USBs to your computer. Okay, one and two, and then execute, double click the flash file. Okay, now what is going to happen is the UVision 4 is actually executed, and we're going to see here some information about the flashing process. Okay, once the process finished, automatically everything is actually closed. So now let's go back to the board and see what happened. Okay, so we reboot by pressing the reset button. And uh, we can actually see that all the initialization process was fine initializing the time, the file system, the network, and 
it has our IP address that we set, the net mask, everything. And we can see in, in red that it says starting Java ME embedded, Java 3.3, .3, and it seems that everything was okay. So let's just start creating some programs and use NetBeans to debug and deploy the application to the device. So let's go back to the computer. Okay, now it's time to test everything. So let's connect to the board and see if everything is still correct. What we're going to do is to open PADI. So as you remember, we installed PADI at the beginning of the software configuration here. What we need to do is we need to connect to the host name. In this case, it's going to be the board. In our case, for this webcast, we use the IP address number 10.0.0.11 and then we need to use the port 65000. If for any reason you forget about this particular port, you can actually check on the board screen and you will actually see this display. One of the lines actually in this screen will tell you about the login port that was open. In this case, you can see how it's initialized in login and it's actually going to use TCP on port 65,000. So if for any chance, for anything, um, for any reason you forget about the port, you can always check your screen and then you have the information you need. Okay, and also you need to make sure that for the connection type, you select row. Make sure you don't forget about this. I, it actually happened to me a couple of times. What's going to happen is just, just going to see um, just, just an empty screen and never able to connect. So once you have it, all the details enter, you can actually open. The first screen you're going to see is actually the login and standard output console. Okay, let's go back and let's open a second one, a second console. So let me bring Patty again. And again, we're going to connect to the our machine. Okay, and in this case, we need to connect to 65002. Okay, again, it's a raw connection. And for this time, we're trying to connect to the command line interface where we can actually use the AMS to actually um, have information about the inlet that you have installed. So what is what is really the set of commands that you can use over here in this command line? So here is just a, uh, an example of, of the, the commands that you can actually use. So for example, you can install a particular inlet, you can list this, the, the inlet that you have previously installed, you can update, remove, you know, all bunch of things, run, stop, etc. And I think that the key one is the help one. So to make sure that you got um, the latest list of available commands, you can always type, type help and this will provide you with the most updated version. So let's try to do a list of what we currently have because we just flashed the board we're not going to have anything but just to make sure that you are able to communicate with the AMS in your system okay so if we do AMS list it would actually tell tell us that nothing is really being installed yet so what we're going to do next is finally we're going to create our first application install it and be able to run it using um, this command line interface or actually using NetBeans for that too. Okay? 